are back with another video with a twist, but this is our nine month update. It's been nine months already? It's been nine months. Wow, time's and, been flying. Yeah. And nobody has ever told me <laughs> that women are really pregnant for darn near 10 months. Everybody thinks nine. Babe, you've been but it's saying really the whole pregnancy months. has been ten months. But I'm saying yeah. nobody told me that until I got pregnant. It's the latter part of the nine months. Go, yes, within the nine ninth month that they give birth. Most people but don't make it. But it's darn near ten uh, months. Most people don't make it that long. That's why. Okay. So before we go into this video, please like it, or you don't have to like right now, but you will by the end. Hopefully. And um, <laughs> make sure you subscribe to our channel. Yeah. And um, check out our social media because we put our maternity photos oh, up. Yes, yes, yes. We did a shoot, a fun She shoot. was showing that belly. Yeah, it was hanging lot, out lot, there. <laughs> a lot of people were saying you were brave for that at the job because they were like, they were not showing their stomach at all. Oh, uh, so. yeah, well out there with that belly line. Yeah. Woo! So go check us out on a sewn seed on social media and uh, yeah. Let check us know out what our, you think. Yeah. Okay. So first question I guess okay. which I'm going to come off the top of the dome with these questions. Nick, how about what's different about she me? She is emotional and she's uh -huh. like see and what really is the aches, the body shifting to prepare for this awesome process that God's created in giving birth. But it's painful, y'all. You know, sometimes you just get these, ah, these, ooh. And yeah, I've been getting Braxton Hicks contractions. And um, especially at night, it's just so painful. It's like a cramping um, feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then on top of that, her head is already engaged, and she is so busy. She's a busy body, so it kind of makes things worse. <laughs> yeah, she's always moving. So yeah. I think that I think the anticipation and excitement is uh, building more because it's like we're in the last uh, lap around the track before yeah. we get to see her. And I think that's just exciting. Uh, I don't know. It's like we've been getting, I guess, physically prepared, you know, yeah. up in the middle of the night. I've been waking up in the middle of the night for no reason, like pop up and then go right back to sleep. But, you know. That, I think that's called pregnancy sympathy or something. I don't like know that. what it is. I wake yeah. up, get the baby and pass it to mama because these ain't giving no milk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's what you're going to do. Oh, yeah. Huh? I'll okay. change the diaper, but I ain't feeding nobody nothing. Okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I guess that's some things that's changed with you. You've mm -hmm. been uh, falling asleep at a drop of a dime. Yeah, I've like, been falling asleep, like, quick. Like, Ashley be like, don't go to sleep. We're watching this. And I'm like, I'm not sleep. Eight o'clock. He be watching. <laughs> <laughs> we be trying to watch him. And he be knocked out. Try to get my sleep now. Because I heard once the baby come, yeah, well, sleep is a minimum. It's hard for me to sleep. You didn't really have any crazy cravings this whole time. Right. But certain <laughs> times you were like really desiring certain foods. So this last little leg of the race, what are you really craving or wanting or find yourself eating a lot? Um, Of course, I always want my crab legs oh. that has not changed like i want to go to the buffet every day and have crab legs but i can't no next you always want uh i eat cereal every morning <laughs> yeah she been eating cereal like crazy yeah first it was like captain crunch yeah now it's but crunch berries crunch berries yeah and now it's now it's Jeez. raisin bran and cheerios with banana but that's because at one of my doctor's appointments they told me that my iron was low say if you the number should be 13 they said i was like at 11 and a half and it wasn't that bad but so they put me on these iron pills but i didn't take them because i want to do it the natural way so i've decided to eat a bunch of foods um <laughs> that's high in iron and i'm still taking my prenatal pills which mm -hmm. also have iron in them Okay. So, 
Um, we'll see what happens. Some crab cakes, doing mad cereal. Still crab craving cake. crab legs. I said crab cakes. Sorry. Still want that pizza all the time. I always want pizza. But love pizza. These last six weeks, this girl's been housing ice chips like, like no tomorrow. Like. Well, you know, I, well, see. <laughs> I didn't even know that I would like ice chips like that until I was at my sister's house. And I, usually I drink my water room temperature, but when I put these ice <laughs> chips in them, oh my God, it was so good. I was like, this is the best. And so ever since then, I was just eating ice chips. Oh, and my sister said, is your iron low? And I was like, oh my God, it is. And she was like, yeah, that's why you're eating these ice chips. Low iron. So. But that's... That's so that's it. a sign of no, low iron. No cravings for me. Uh, just regular. He said no cravings. For me. <laughs> um, right. Heartburn, of course. But I did want to mention um, that you know I've been popping my tums. I have a, a tums addiction <sighs> now. <laughs> but there was 21 days I did a T-top. And I did not have my Tums through that whole 21 days um, for my heartburn because this tea tox was so great. You can get the tea from CandidTea.com, but we did, um, it was like a social media if you're a part of Candid Tea. I did it with a group of people and the irony is that the tea is called the MOM and it was so good for me with heartburn. So if you can't have like, I mean, it only has like one little thing of caffeine in it. It's, it's not much caffeine at all. But if you, um, if you don't want to do this, then I recommend the Power Player, which is also good for heartburn. So check out CandidTea.com and pregnant women, you will be so happy you did. We also this last Saturday had the childbirth class, yes. which was very informative. Did the, the he, he, he. He, well, like, oh I like gosh, to you say... Oh my gosh, you did so good, Ramsey. How did you remember um, that? I like to say crab legs, cheese sticks, pizza. No, Ooh. no, don't say it. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do in the hospital no. one time. No. Just one time. What, what was one of the major takeaways that you've learned in our childbirth class? Be prepared for any and everything. I mean, I'm going to be there. Not to pass out, not to lock your legs. Well, eat, you don't have no choice not to pass eat, out. Eat, eat, eat. Even my own mother said I might pass out. Yeah. My mom has zero faith. No, she just oh, said anything. Please. She said anything could happen. Um, but just to, to prepare, like, the signs that we don't have to rush, like the movie say, when the water breaks. Right. And uh, no, laboring longer home will yeah. be less in the hospital. Which is what I want to do. She wanted a home birth, y'all, in a pool. And I said, not this first time. There's too many risks. We need to go ahead to where it's safe, secure, and let's learn a little bit. And then maybe the next time. Maybe the yeah. next time. Oh, we had our baby showers. So check out this video and check out our two baby showers, which we've decided not to have a third. Mm. And you don't know why in that video. Okay, so there's one thing that I would like to talk about because it's something that I've been having an issue with during pregnancy. And this is so far-fetched, y'all. Like, it's so totally off-topic. But it's friends. And you know how you have friends. Like, you, you always hear about fair-weather friends or, you know, friends that are there for reasons and seasons. You know, you go through seasons of, of your life and friends change. And so, I feel like there's some instances right now in my pregnancy, I guess with these, this season of life, that friends are changing. They aren't there for me as much as I thought they would be. And then I have friends that are, that are there that will call me and check up on me and say, look, I'm gonna come over and fix you some chicken. You know who you are. <laughs> But, so, I just want to get your take on it, and, um, you know, because I don't want to be fleshy, because you know we can be that way at times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't be saying no, <laughs> uh -huh. I want to know some examples that maybe Jesus went through. Well, let's, first off, whenever you talk about friendships, there are, I 
did a college course or I taught a Bible study and it was recent seasons and lifetime talking about different relationships or for in your life for a season or a specific reason or sometimes a lifetime and a lot of times we miss mess up when we expect someone to be a certain type of relationship like lifetime mm -hmm. when they are only supposed to be in our life for a specific reason mm -hmm. and I think number one we got to check our expectation of the relationship like what are we expecting did we give 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 and we're expecting them to do the exact same back to us because that's not how relationships work uh, a lot of times we will pour out way more than we get quid pro pro in that one relationship because we might be pouring out because they need it and someone else might be the one pouring back into us mm -hmm. so one is always you gotta check what is our expectation out of the relationship because a lot of times that's where the disconnect and the the you know disappointment falls and when we look at the bible which i think you want me to kind of go mm -hmm. to jesus had you know 12 disciples 12 friends that rolled the earth with him one traded him for 30 pieces of silver um when he needed them the most, mm -hmm. they scattered and fled. One denied him three times. So it's like if he had a high expectation of, oh, I raised the dead and healed the sick and gave you food and, you know, provided for you. And then when I needed you, you guys weren't there. There could have been a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, he knew that they're human mm -hmm. and they would make mistakes and that his giving was not contingent on what they would be giving back right. to him. So I think that's one Thing we can learn from jesus of course he's god so he did it perfectly and we will struggle with that mm -hmm. but understand that even if jesus was let down by those so will we okay but then i think about the seasons and life changes so we're away from single then we got married so some people are around when we're single aren't around when we're married and then new people come mm -hmm. that weren't around when we're single that are when we're married mm -hmm. so now we're shifting to becoming parents and i believe it's another season where some people that were with us before may not be with us on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then some people that weren't there will enter. And then you have some people that will follow us through. And I think a good biblical example of this is Paul and Barnabas. Paul was one of the greatest apostles, preached everywhere. And Barnabas was one of his guys that traveled with him. And one time, it was Paul, Barnabas, and a bunch of other guys. One guy, particularly John Mark. And John Mark left them to go back home and do some the Bible really doesn't say. And so time passes. And so Paul and Barnabas are set to go out again. Mm -hmm. And Barnabas goes, let's go get John Mark, the guy who left us. Let's... And Paul's like, no, that dude ain't coming with me. Mm -hmm. He left me before. I'm not rolling with him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a doctrinal thing. It was just a relational thing. It was a different season. Mm -hmm. And what happened was Paul and Barnabas were so at odds that they parted ways over this one guy, over this relationship. Mm -hmm. And so they kept doing what God called them to do. They kept doing great things. And then later on in life, the beauty of it is the one that Paul did not want to come mm -hmm. while he was in jail, he sent for that same one. said, mm -hmm. now he's profitable for me. God has a purpose. Let's bring it back. So what I love in that story is we can butt heads in relationships. Right. We can have disappointments and we can even go separate ways. But as long as we stay true to what God's calling us to do and on the purpose and plan he has for us, mm -hmm. that all those relationships can always come back in God's purpose, his time, and in his love. And I think that's what we have to stay focused on that. Yeah, they may have disappointed me. They may have let me down. This may not be the season that we're so close. So we're on different tracks. But always keep the door open because God may call you paths across again. So if you're dealing with something like that, what do you do? Yes, keep the door open because you know your paths could cross again. Mm -hmm. But right now, you might what need can you to do? naturally give space. And there's nothing wrong with giving space. I know the college kids are like, oh, it's cut off season, skip, I'm cut. And, and that's see, how I used to be. So this is, this no, is a lesson no, for me. No, in that, itself. that is fleshly. That yes. is, is all emotional. Right. That is not healthy exactly so, so what you can do is okay now. that's what i'm feeling let me take a step back mm -hmm. okay and re-examine the you know the whole relationship let me take a step back and breathe and focus on god because right now i'm focused on what they didn't do for me mm -hmm. and that's clouding my vision let me take a step back say okay god it's all about you you know i love you you love me help me see and allow him to give you new perspective mm -hmm. on what that relationship is the time may have expired. 
it may be time to push pause or it may be time to say, okay, God, whatever you have in the future, I'll just trust you with it. Okay. And that's a more healthy Christian way mm -hmm. to deal with the relationship versus cut off season, see you next lifetime. We ain't doing that no more. Thank that you. was the old that. us. We are in Christ. So now there is a new way right. to deal with relationships. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. though it may be hard. Yeah. Stick with it. Because yeah. the fruit will be much greater on this path. Yeah. Well, I hope you liked the update. Hope you can get something from that little nugget on yeah. relationship yes. seasons and reasons. And I if mean, you... we still work in ourselves. So we are no yeah. pros. We still working on it ourselves. Obviously. And if you have any questions, even on my pregnancy, like, um, it'll probably be here where we will answer your questions. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I didn't mention my swollen feet and my Charlie horses, but I'll be having them. <laughs> Kinkles up, but not about that. Let's go. It's not about that. Okay. So <laughs> make sure you like and subscribe to our channel um give this video a thumbs up check out our social media again because you don't want to miss some things that's on there and um we love you and we will see love you, you so next much. time see ya see ya